Hi all, I have another absolutely brilliant Leela game from the Vision 1 of TSEC Season 14. So this is against the mighty Laser Chess Engine. The opening book given Sicilian Defence Territory. Very exciting, Sicilian Nidorf. So here we have Leela, uh, still in book now. This position is where Leela has to think for herself and she comes up with f5 which is a bit of a theoretical novelty really interesting theoretical novelty because black is usually building up on the e-pawn with things like b5 bishop b7 and if needed this knight can come and hit e4 it's usually quite dangerous to commit to this e-pawn being slightly vulnerable here but it is kind of dislocating black's position in half imagine uh, this har halving the board, the communication aspects of Black's position are being influenced potentially by uh, such a sacrifice. Let's see the standard move, Bishop d3, e6. For example, this looks pretty standard and it's thought to be about equal. So, this is very, very interesting territory. Knight bd7, g4. So, giving the bishop g2 at least to support e4, h6, putting the brakes on g5, queen e2, b5. And now, knight d5, leaving a kind of vulnerable disconnected pawn on d5, potentially as a pawn sack. So knight takes, e takes, knight b6. Black can put a lot of pressure on d5. Bishop g2, bishop b7. And here is the point. Bishop e3, pawn sacrifice to damage black's communication. The king's still in the center. These pieces still not developed over here. Will they be spectator pieces there? on f8 and h8 for a while and what about this pawn it's a center pawn well it is actually taken by the knight if it's taken by the bishop then actually knight takes b5 here exploiting celebrating the king in the center is good after takes queen takes b5 check this is very nice for white indeed big advantage so the safe way if black wants to take a pawn is this knight takes d5 Leela Castle's queen side, so a nice dynamic position. And it looks as though, hold on a sec, isn't this throwing caution to the wind again for a second pawn? Isn't there this horribly painful cold shower move, queen c4, either saying exchange queens or a2 will drop? Queen c4 is played. Just before we go into that seemingly cold shower move, knight takes e3, there's bishop takes. And here, queen takes this position is quite pleasant. Uh, queen a3 might not be uh, that good. Uh, for example, black has resources here, even if white wins d6. This is okay, technically. Probably a better way is not trying to get the material back with queen d3, just keeping the pressure. Uh, this, this kind of style of the position is actually more promising, where the question is asked about these pieces ever leaving the box. And white can just build up pressure slowly and maybe even squish on the king's side. More abstract, more tension in the position. And actually, it's going to be a much bigger payload dividend of interest when white does cash out here. So that's the better way of playing it, it seems. This is really dangerous uh, for black. Okay, so um, we have actually, though, queen c4. So what does Lula do? Actually, rook d3 offering a2. So keeping a lot of tension on the board. Uh, taking the queens off, as you'd expect, the pawn down is not such a hot idea. It's at least equal. So rook d3. Now rook b8 was played. You might wonder, well, what about taking this pawn? Is it poisoned? Knight b3 controls a1 and it hits d5. And there's a nasty pin on the unprotected piece at b7 so for example rook c8 which does introduce the tactic of queen takes b3 sometimes so for example if rook takes then there's queen takes b3 this position gets super hairy after rook c5 so taking on g2 we take on c8 and we take on c5 we take on b7 and it's hairy indeed but it should be about even actually so um that Let's just go back. So queen takes, knight b3, rook c8. Uh, uh, so we had a look at rook takes d5 there. 
but there's a better way for white to play instead of rook takes d5 here there's rook hd1 so sometimes the quiet moves are much better keeping the pressure on keeping the knight protected from the queen and for example f6 because black's not doing too much on the king side development now rook takes is with a vengeance after takes there's rook takes d6 here and this is very very interesting so for example if ed there's bishop takes b7 and then this discovered check and then take the queen as an example uh on yeah so it's it's all pretty dangerous actually just with this quiet move rook hd1 it's very very dangerous for black uh, so uh it's avoided anyway rook b8 black doesn't go in for taking the a2 pawn we have bishop d2 a5 now this pawn is kind of poisoned immediately if bishop takes then there's knight f4 exploiting the weakness of the last move it's, bishop's not covering f4 anymore the knight pounces in forking loads of things and here this is just horrible horrendous disaster but lead is not that bad tactically so rook e1 not taking that pawn either the a pawns are a bit poisoned it seems in this position for both sides a4 king b1 b4 yeah the knight is controlling normal development for black it's really dangerous this position we have b3 queen c5 and now a move you might think on the surface doesn't look aesthetically great but it's super functional b takes a4 super functional it vacates b3 actually for knight b3 it breaks up black's pawns there's no form pawn threat see the teespring uh, description for form pawns so the pawns are eliminated and this is potentially a dangerous outside pass pawn but i played bishop a6 here skewering queen the rook against the queen uh what else you know if e5 we just take on e6 uh there's no there's no natural way for black to develop pieces here on bishop a8 there's knight b5 and a lot of pressure on d5 emerging uh, for example this position there's rook takes d5 as well tactically for knight c7 check winning the queen so there's a lot of pressure here uh you might think hold on a sec what about knight c3 check you can take there take here and knight b3 there's no queen a3 because we take the, the c3 pawn uh and given that's the case if queen c6 we use the outside pass pawn with a big advantage so we have actually in the game uh bishop a6 so now bishop takes d5 queen takes d5 on bishop takes d3 this is far too dangerous for black after queen f3 the knight conveniently holds c2 here so say bishop a6 knight b3 then a check queen d5 and this is disaster for black uh might infiltrate with queen f7 for example and it's just total devastation for the black position okay so uh we have queen takes d5 here now knight b5 discovering an attack on the queen threatening knight c7 check the knight's eliminated but we still have this lack of development here and now queen f3 is played with ideas like rook takes d6 or more positional after f6 rook d4 going for this pawn once this pawn can be eliminated we have a dangerous outside pass pawn which i was saying even in the live i noticed and i had to go after but i thought this pawn could be dangerous in this circumstance it's much more effective than usual because of the disconnection issues the lack of development how is black actually stopping an outside pass pawn here uh so if we look at rook takes d6 this is plausible as well this is a good position as well of course but uh, this use of the a pawn the past a pawn is really positionally dangerous because it's just going to grow it's a grower an advantage grower this a pawn as it goes up the board so we have rook b5 rook c4 queen e5 now queen e6 cementing a form pawn central form pawn uh to, con to sort of make sure black has to waste a load of time to try and develop these pieces in the meantime this pawn's going to be taken and this a pawn's going to be a runner we have the immediate threat of rook c8 check so if rook b8 we take the queen uh but otherwise you know rook c8 check has to be parried so we have queen takes leaving this horrible pawn in the center form pawn controlling the king's escape squares threatening rook c8 
checkmate. The rook drops back, but now the B pawn is going. And you might think, well, hold on a sec. This is this totally the end of the world. Well, rook d8 is played because otherwise this is a nightmare and it is the end of the game after checkmate. So the rook has to meekly step aside to d8. Now we have rook e c4, and now the rook goes on the seventh rank. Black has to sacrifice the e7 pawn uh, to mobilize these pieces. That's taken. Now here you might think, well, it's simplifying, but what's the big deal? You might think it's the a pawn. As mentioned, the a pawn is a real killer still in this position. Uh, with the king over there especially when the king's over there and not over here it's a long way for the king to travel to do anything about this in this simplified position this running a pawn is super dangerous black has to take time out to take that one check and now the a pawn increases in strength rookie seven a6 now threatening rook b7 rook a7 rook b6 and black is still really tied down here if the d pawn is taken for nothing there's even the c pawn coming down the board as well but the other key point about taking the d pawn is is also to mean bishop e3 hits the rook to unblockade we have f5 this is a lost position here totally uh, just because of the outside pass pawn if h5 for example bishop e3 actually is better than rook d6 technically then we can take d6 well maybe it doesn't matter about the move order but we play a7 and then we just go and uh, play rook d8 and then that pawn's going to queen or blast to give up the rook so massive advantage there so f5 is played now the neat bishop c3 offering the bishop because of the rook b7 check so rook takes a6 was played just to put that on the board if bishop takes we have rook b7 check and that's going to be queening that pawn the bishop's not uh, helping here in this position that pawn is queening so uh we have rook takes a6 rook takes so black's just the exchange down here but g takes played first rook takes the exchange down and we've got the pass c pawn to use so the king comes up, h pawns dropping. It's totally over. It's adjudicated as a win here for white. So beautiful game, beautiful novelty with f5. Something for the over the board world to take note of in that particular position. The idea of sacrificing a pawn on d5. The a2 lines are a bit hairy, but white's in control, it seems. Uh, so a fantastic game where, in fact, by eliminating black's pawns, white ends up with a very strong outside pass pawn, which is winning in its own right. Very instructive how there's positional outcomes from seemingly tactical chaos in the middle of the game. But uh, yeah, fantastically instructive. Hope you enjoyed the game. If you did, then please click on the top left box, which should appear shortly to become a member at chessbowl.net, play against other YouTubers. You can also check the YouTube analysis in advance from the improved menu of Chessmold and uh, learn from the Masters YouTube order button. Comments, questions, donations, see the description. Like, share, subscribe with the notification bell. All really appreciated. And also there's the new Teespring store. See the description for form pawns and other chess t-shirts. Okay. Thanks very much.